welcome to your own tour of the planetarium's deep space adventure. These are your tour guides, Jordan and Saturn, who will be taking you inside the walls of the Adler Planetarium. So grab your tickets, because this ship is landing. Our first stop, Planet Explorers. Saturn and I have geared up and are now exploring this exoplanet, that is, a planet outside our solar system. Looks like its gravitational pull might be a little weak. So what makes a planet habitable? Its composition plays a major role. Composition, simply put, is what a planet is made out of, and the farther away from the sun a planet is, the more gaseous it is. For our life, we need a terrestrial or rocky planet. These are only found in the habitable zone, the zone outside of a star that can support liquid water. Temperature is another key aspect for life that depends on the planet's proximity to the sun. It's basically a Goldilocks situation, not too hot or the water will evaporate, and not too cold or the water will simply freeze. The mass of the planet determines whether or not a planet can hold an atmosphere, another key ingredient for life. Because we are so far away from exoplanets, it's hard to calculate all of this information. That is why scientists have unique ways of bringing information to us rather than going out to get it. Saturn, do you think there's a chance to find extraterrestrial friends? After all, there are 3,845 habitable planet candidates. But how did they find them? The same way Kepler does, the transit method. This works by monitoring blips and brightness created when a planet orbiting a star passes in front of it. Here at Adler, they have a screen where you yourself can detect these blips. What do you say we head back to our galaxy for now? At the planetarium, they have shows like Welcome to the Universe and Cosmic Wonder. Let's take a look inside the dome. We can even imagine planets orbiting other stars as well. This illustration, also a part of the Adler's collections, depicts that new world view, with each star orbited by undiscovered world. And as we get closer and closer, you can either follow along with the penny or set yours down, whatever works for you. But if you are following along, go ahead and set it down because we're gonna keep going. We're actually headed for this patch of sky, the size of Abraham Lincoln's eye. Now this image is known as the Hubble Extreme Deep Field. The image combines exposures taken over a decade and it's equivalent to 23 continuous days of exposure. That allows us to detect some very faint objects. There are 5,500 galaxies in this tiny patch of sky the size of Lincoln's eye. And that means there are about 600 billion galaxies across the whole sky. And don't forget, each of those galaxies has, on average, hundreds of billions of stars. Now, the small red objects in this image are among the most distant galaxies ever observed. 
Because it takes light many billions of years to reach us from these objects, we observe them as they were in the distant past. In this one image, we can observe 95% of cosmic history, gathering information about how galaxies evolved over time. And we can gather all that information just from that one tiny patch of sky the size of Abraham Lincoln's eye on a penny held at arm's length. Imagine how much more we have yet to discover across the whole night sky. So why is this relevant? What does it mean? Comparative planetology tells us that studying other planets naturally gives us insight into our own planet Earth. Kepler's main goal was to find exoplanets, its long-term goal being to help us answer, is our planet unique? One in five stars in the galaxy have an Earth-like planet. This means that there are 11 billion potentially habitable planets in our galaxy alone. And with over 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe, there are certainly plenty of opportunities for education and for insight. Thank you for joining us at the Adler Planetarium today. We hope you enjoyed becoming a planet explorer.